What's going on everyone? It's Pro Warriors. In today's video, we're going to test the brand new update of the APS3 EPS3 emulator for Android. The APS3 E emulator has just received a fresh beta release version 1.4. While it's still in the early stages of development, this update brings some noticeable improvements. So today, we're going to test it, explore what's actually new, and most importantly, compare its performance with the competitor RPCSX UI for Android. This video will be a complete installation and easy setup guide, packed with helpful information, including the best settings for optimal performance. Let's install the latest APS3 EV 1.4. As for APS3 E, it has had a rocky path, being removed multiple times from GitHub, and it's uncertain if it will ever return there. For ongoing updates, I highly recommend joining their official Discord server. After installation, you'll notice everything is the same as in previous updates. We all know APS 3E requires the PS3 firmware to operate. This PS3 firmware is available on the official PlayStation 3 website, so download it from there and then install the firmware. One notable thing here, it doesn't take too much time to compile the firmware like RPCSX. That's really good. Now install ISO or PKG game files, meaning it supports both game formats. Disclaimer. The emulator itself is legal, but using illegal ROMs is forbidden. I do not support or provide access to pirated games, so please use legal copies for your safety. If you go to the About section, you'll see that the GPU is now configured with Vulkan drivers, along with updated CPU support, so that's already a good sign. Heading into the Settings menu under Core Settings, one of the key improvements is the ability to adjust the core PPU decoder and thread settings. Using Recompiler LLVM is fine as the PPU decoder. For PPU threads, check your phone's thread count in the system info. Some of these settings can significantly improve performance, but if you're unsure, it's completely fine to stick with the default values. Now let's talk about the most anticipated update, the video settings. Here, you can choose between OpenGL and Vulkan as your rendering API. Personally, I recommend Vulkan for better performance on most devices. If you're running high-end games, lowering the resolution to something like 720x480 can really help boost performance. The frame rate can go up to 120 FPS, but I suggest keeping it on auto for now to maintain stability. Also, set the aspect ratio to 16 to 9 and enable both right color buffers and right depth buffers. Enable V-Sync, which helps eliminate screen tearing, and toggle stretch mode for full screen gameplay. There are plenty more new features here to explore. At the bottom of the page, you'll find the Vulkan settings. Here, enable Use Custom Driver, then select the custom driver path from your phone's storage. I'm using Adreno 819. Unfortunately, non-Snapdragon users can't take advantage of this feature. Also, enable the Performance Overlay option to monitor your game's performance. The resolution scale can be useful for low-end devices. Since we already selected the lowest resolution, some high-end games might still lag. In that case, decrease the resolution scale further. The other options are fine. You don't need to change them. The APS3 E1.4 update definitely shows progress, but it still falls short of delivering complete satisfaction. RPCSX currently offers more improvements and better performance. However, having a competitor like APS3 E is a good thing it encourages both teams to push beyond their limits. So, we need to stay patient as the emulator continues to develop. With time and dedication, we can hope for a stable and well-optimized PS3 emulator. Until then, let's appreciate the hard work and effort the developers are putting in. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more emulator updates. Take care.